Hello, my name is Dr. Hines. Again, I'm here to have candid conversations with students, parents, and guardians on making the transition from high school to college. And today, I want to do a part one series on the infamous FAFSA report, or the FAFSA form, or for what it is uh, more importantly called, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So when you hear the term FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A, that's what it means, free application for federal student aid. And just so uh, parents and guardians and students can understand the importance of financial aid, um, in a report done by uh, the National C Center for Educational Statistics, in 2006 and 2007, 75 percent of all students who attended public institutions received some sort of financial aid assistance. In 2009 and 2010, that number rose to 79%. And in 2011 and 2012, 80% of all students who are attending public institutions received some sort of financial aid. So basically what that's saying is that financial aid is a vital piece for students to be able to attend college. Bottom line, someone has to pay the bill for food, uh, board, uh, tuition, books, supplies, all that is needed to cover the cost uh, to attend a uh, institution. And so in this video, and I'll just do a part one uh, for this section, I'm just going to give you some brief overall information that you'll need so that you can move forward and successfully complete the FAFSA form. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do when you... Um, go to the FAFSA, is first you need to know the correct web address. The correct web address to uh, complete the FAFSA form is fafsa.ed.gov. That's F-A-F-S-A dot E-D dot G-O-V. And I say that because a lot of times students and parents, what they will do is they will Google or do a search for FAFSA and a number of different sites come up and then they start to plug in their information and then they find out that there is a fee. If it asks you for a fee to complete the FAFSA, you are in the wrong site. The FAFSA is a free, and that's why the first word in the acronym is free application for federal student aid. So if they're asking you for money, what they're saying to you is that if you pay us X amount of dollars, we will process your FAFSA form for you. We cannot guarantee that you're going to get X amount of dollars in financial aid, but we will process the form for you. The form is pretty self-explanatory, and so it, you should not be paying to fill out a FAFSA form. That is just a market employee that some businesses have gone in to try to get you to pay. Um, and if you choose to do that, that's you. That's totally your choice. Uh, but when I direct students and when I direct parents, I direct them to the site, again, fafsa.ed.gov. And the first thing you're going to have to do when you set up a FAFSA uh, form is you're going to have to request a PIN. It's a four-digit PIN number, and it's used for identification, but also as you matriculate from your freshman year to your sophomore year to your junior year to your senior year, Instead of you having to reapply all the information in and how and, and use an identifying indicator, the PIN is something that is set up to make it easier for you as you move forth and continue to, to do the FAFSA because, yes, students and parents, you will have to complete a FAFSA every year that your child is enrolled in college. I will repeat that again. Every year that your child is enrolled in college, they're going to have to complete a FAFSA form for that particular academic year. So let's say if they're going to be freshmen this year, that means the year 2015-2016. If they earn enough credits to be a sophomore, then they will have to complete a new FAFSA for 2016 and 17, if you can understand what I'm saying. And so to complete the PIN, you're going to need to have your social security number, last name, first name, middle initial, uh, date of birth, uh, your city, state address, your email address. It will then ask you for a challenge question, 
Uh, you'll have to answer the question. It could be, what city were you born in? What's your pet's name? And then they give you the option that you can create your own four-digit pin. Um, when I did my FAFSA, yes, I used the FAFSA because I was not filthy rich. Um, I allowed the system to create the FAFSA number for me. Um, and so that's what you'll need to set up the pin. And what will happen is that initially they will give you the option that you can have the pin mailed to you or they will email it to you in so much time. Uh, but they do that as a form of security because vital information is available through the FAFSA. And so they want to make sure that when you're logging in to check on the status, when you're logging in to check on your student aid report, in which I will talk about in another video, they really know that it's you that's logging on. And that's how they're able to track who logs on to look at your information. And <clears throat> the other important thing is to understand that there are deadlines. Um, so the deadline to complete the FAFSA for the academic year is June 30th. So for instance, if your child was looking at being a freshman in the fall of 2015, the FAFSA would need to be completed online by June 30th of this year. And what I tell students is, uh, the earlier that you complete the FAFSA, what happens is that that information is sent to the federal government and based on the schools that you put on the FAFSA, say if you want to go to X and X school or X and X university, they will get the results from your FAFSA and then send you a student aid report or an award letter. And again, I'll go more into detail in that in another video. Um, but it's important that you beat that deadline because if you miss that deadline, you are ineligible for financial aid for that particular year. Now, if you're going to make any changes or corrections to your FAFSA form, that needs to be done by September 17th of that year. And um, if you want to request a paper copy of the FAFSA, I'll give you the phone number. You can call 1-800-433-3243. Again, the number is 1-800-433-3243. And they will mail you a paper copy of the FAFSA. But at the end of this video, I have a surprise for you. Um, if you are hearing impaired, or let's say you're a student and your parent or guardian is hearing impaired, there's a number that they can call that will assist them in filling out the FAFSA. And that number is 1-800-730-8913. Again, that number is one 800 730 8913. Now the last bit of information that I'm going to give you today is what is needed when you complete the FAFSA online. First, you have to be a citizen of eligible or an eligible non-citizen of the United States. Uh, second of all, you have to have a valid social security number. Third of all, you have, you would have had by the time that you get your funds, have graduated from high school with a diploma or a GED. Now understand, when you're filling out the FAFSA, you're still going to be in school. But before they can award the money to whatever university that you're going to, by the time that they award the money, you would have had to have earned a diploma or a GED. Um, and also, uh, you're going to have to be enrolled in... Uh, a high school program that's seeking a degree or a certificate as a regular student. You're going to have to maintain satisfactory student goals and progress. You can't be in default of a former uh, federal student loan. So if you are a recent high school graduate, uh, you went to school and you're in default, you can't get um, money from the FAFSA. Uh, you can't be in default from any other federal loan, and you can't owe money for an existing grant. So those are pretty much the stipulations of getting the FAFSA. Uh, the surprise that I have for you is that I will have a link, which will be a PDF on this site, that you can actually go on and print out a paper copy of the 2015-2016 FAFSA form. So you can print that right from my site. It's from a PDF. And you can print it out and use that as a guide so students and parents can sit down, have conversation, so that when you go online, and I suggest 
and I strongly urge that you do it online because you do you will get your student aid report a lot quicker if you do the financial aid report online instead of doing it on paper. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate uh, the feedback that I've been getting back from my videos. Uh, again, if you feel so inclined, if you want to make a contribution to help these videos continue uh, to aid student teachers, parents, and anyone who's interested in helping students transition from high school to college, my PayPal information is involved and it is included. Thank you so much for your time.